Welcome, and thanks for joining this webinar organized by the MITx MicroMasters in Supply Chain Management Program. I'm Ima Borrella, the academic lead of this MicroMasters program and a research scientist at the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. I will be your host today. During the next 45 minutes, we will discuss new trends in supply chain management and more specifically, the role of AI in this field. We will also explain the MicroMasters program in supply chain management and how it can help you prepare for the current and future challenge in this field. Our expert speaker for this session is Dr. Eva Ponte. Welcome, Eva, and thanks for joining us today. Glad to be here. Welcome, everyone. Eva is the director of the MIT Omnichannel Supply Chain Lab and the director of online education at the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics. Her research explores the transformation of supply chains to provide an omnichannel experience emphasizing actionable insights for retailers and manufacturers. She has collaborated with a lot of companies, guiding them in redesigning the e-commerce fulfillment strategies and adapting to the impact of technological advancements and automation in particular. She also leads research initiatives um, focused on sustainable supply chain practices, specifically in circular supply chains, reverse logistics, and closed loop supply chain. So, the format of this session will be conversational. I have prepared a few questions for Eva, and we also encourage the audience to share your questions using the Zoom Q&A feature in the bottom right of, right of your screen. You should be seeing it in, in your Zoom screen. We will also share some polls throughout the webinar, so be ready to participate. And actually, to get started, let's share the first poll right now. There we go. And while you answer the poll, um, and before we dive into discussing new trends in supply chains, I would like to introduce the program that Eva and I are leading. So I prepared a few slides, and it won't take long. There we go. Sure. All right. So the MicroMasters program in supply chain management is an amazing program. Uh, it uh, contains MIT graduate level content in supply chain management. It means that all the content in the program is based on in-person courses that we teach at MIT. It's 100% online, uh, and that means that it's available for anyone anywhere with internet connectivity. So no matter where you are, you can take these online courses and learn with us. Learning is asynchronous. This means that all the content is available and you can decide at what time of the day or the weekend you want to uh, review the content and practice with our problems, which is very convenient for people who need to juggle between work and family and you know, all the other things uh, that we, we need to manage every day. And another very powerful feature of our courses is that they uh, combine videos and practice problems and quick questions. And these problems provide instantaneous feedback and uh, research has demonstrated that this instantaneous feedback it's amazing for reinforcing learning. So it's a really, these courses are very effective in actually like helping you learn new stuff about supply chains. What will you learn in our courses? So this is really a journey. It's truly a journey. Uh, the program consists of five courses and it ranges from you know, toolbox of basic techniques that is supply chain analytics, basic analytical techniques that you should all master to properly manage supply chains, then we go in supply chain fundamentals to cover fundamental concepts and models in forecasting, inventory, and transportation, the pillars of supply chains. In supply chain design, you, we deep dive into the three flows of supply chain, so materials, finance, and information. Then in supply chain dynamics, we connect with the real world. We go from models, more theoretical models, to actually the like complexity of reality. And um, in supply chain technology and systems, you will learn data management, databases, big data, uh, advanced analytics, such as machine learning algorithms, and the systems that we all need to manage when we work with supply chains. So as you can see, it's like a very comprehensive program covering a wide range of topics. And what is really special about this program is that it is a pathway to a master's degree at MIT. This program is, it was the first one of its kind when it was launched in 2016. And um, it is very special because you can start with an online course and end at, with us on working with us on campus at MIT. How, did this, how can this happen? 
you first need to take the five online courses that I just explained. explained. Then you must take a comprehensive final exam that is also online. And if you pass this exam, you will get your micro master's credential in supply chain management, which is a huge achievement in itself. But if after that you want to continue learning with us and you want to come on campus uh, to be with us in person, you can apply to the MIT Blended Master's in Supply Chain Management. And this program will allow you to get a Master of Applied Sciences or Master of Engineering degree from MIT in just five months in, on campus. This program is amazing and it has been recognized as the best program in the world by many rankings, international rankings. And it's not only MIT who is recognizing the value of the MicroMasters credential. It is also recognized by industry and practitioners around the world. Many companies are actually using our courses to train their workforce. And other academic institutions beyond MIT are recognizing the MicroMasters as a pathway for credit to their own degrees. And just so you get a sense of the impact that we've had so far since 2016 when we launched, more than 1 million people have enrolled in our courses, and we have issued more than 5,000 credentials. So this is the program in numbers. Um, I hope you found the information useful. Let's check actually your answers to the first poll. It seems that many of you, or like half of you, have already completed some of our courses. Awesome. We love it. Thank you for joining today. We love to have you like, you know, interacting live with us. Some of you are just starting the journey. You just enroll in some of our courses for the first time. So good luck. You can do it. And uh, some of you are interested in exploring. You're not sure. Maybe it's the first time you're hearing about it. So yeah, welcome. And we hope you to join the learning journey with us. Let me share the results so you all can see the, the responses. Great. So, you know, this was a very short introduction. If you have questions, more specific questions about um, the program, I know our team, Kara and Lisa, are there helping answer questions. So feel free to ask your questions using the Q&A feature and they will answer your questions. They will also be sharing some interesting links in the chat, links for, to our website where you can find all details about what I uh, briefly mentioned right now. But now let's start talking about the latest trends in supply chain management. So Eva, could you please tell us about your current research focus and the most exciting trends in supply chain that you're observing? Thank you, Ima. Sure. That, uh, let me share uh, a couple of slides that I have prepared for that. So first of all, uh, you asked about my research line. So um, I founded the MIT Omnichannel Supply Chain Lab in 2017. So this lab is a uh, MIT CTL, Center for Transportation and Logistic Lab, that is totally aligned with the, the mission of CTL. So the research we are doing here is applied research, is a, always research with companies, with organizations. So the mission of the lab is to develop new insights on how Omnichannel is transforming supply chains through these cutting edge research with innovative companies, companies like big retailers like Walmart or wholesalers like Sam's Club or CPG companies like P&G and Mondelez, Colgate or third party logistic providers like Maps. So uh, in summary, in terms of the uh, um, research lines, one of the research lines for this uh, lab is um, to uh, identify the current trends and challenges in omnichannel. So for that, every fall, we are conducting a survey, an annual survey with uh, relevant companies in this area. Another uh, research line that we are uh, working in this lab is about uh, fulfillment strategies and how uh, these new fulfillment models are helping especially traditional brick and mortars to move into the online space. There is a third focus, and um, uh, 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 we have been very active in the last year working on the warehouse of the future and working also in identify um, ways to help companies to evaluate the 
technology they need to implement in their companies um, uh, to implement and to work specifically in highly automated warehouses. And one of these uh, uh, research lines focuses specifically on the role of AI in omnichannel. That is one of the key topics that I'm going to be covering today during this webinar. Um, you asked me also, Ima, about the key trends I have observed based on this research. So I want to summarize in four big trends. The first one I want to bring here is the growth of e-commerce and omnichannel strategies. This is a trend that has been accelerated uh, after the pandemic, um, more specifically when traditional brick and mortars uh, had the need to move into the online space. This trend is really common now. Um, in the recent, sur recent survey I, la I conducted last fall, almost 80% of the companies that participated were actively implementing an omnichannel strategy. And it's bringing many different challenges. Uh, having more channels increase the complexity. Having more SKUs also increase the complexity, but also we need to acknowledge that the cost associated to manage these omnichannel networks is higher in terms of the labor cost, but also in terms of the last mile delivery cost. This last mile delivery cost, uh, when we are talking about the logistic cost in e-commerce in particular, represent a big chunk of this a total logistic cost. So this is one big trend I want to bring here. The second trend is related to customer expectations. Customer expectation has been increasing in, 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 continuously. This is something that always customer wants more for less, let's say in that way. One um, trend here I want to bring is that about 70% of customers identified faster home delivery as their main expectation from retail stores. This faster home delivery is bringing a lot of challenges from the back end of the supply chain because it has implications. If we need to deliver the same day, we need to be closer to the customer, but be close to the customer, closer to the customer is typically more expensive. The facilities and many other implications. The third, key trend I want to bring here is the sustainability and circular supply chains. This is a trend that has been increasing from a um, consumer's uh, perspective, uh, more pressure from the consumers for sure, but also from the regulations and governments. Um, we have difference here. For example, in Europe, they are much more proactively uh, having laws and directives in order to uh, push for certain goals in sustainability. In US, we have a variety of different differences in between different states, but California, for example, has been also very actively on that. What are the pressure here? What are the goals here? Uh, companies and organizations in general are trying and working hard to reduce carbon emissions. They are also trying to minimize waste, trying to promote programs that help to reduce the consuming, uh, the consumption, uh, to reuse more or have recycling programs or just incorporate your regenerative systems. So this is truly a big trend that is impacting, I would say, all of the industries. And the final thing I want to bring that connects, I think, with the topic that you want me to expand, Ima, is the adoption of new technologies. And here is not only talking about automation, that we have observed an increased number of automation, um, more uh, use of robots in uh, manufacturing systems, but also in distribution systems and also in warehouses. So uh, more recently, we are observing companies uh, experimenting and piloting a lot with AI tools. From traditional AI tools like machine learning or clustering techniques uh, to more recent uh, tools uh, like the generative AI tools. So I'm going to stop here with the trends and uh, let you go with the, with the flow, Ima. Thank you, Eva. Uh, I think Thank you so much for sharing the trends. I think we can all relate to these trends from the consumer side. Right? We're chasing online, expecting same day or next day delivery, 
me, the first one, I, I do that a lot. However, the implications of these consumer changes in supply chain operations and supply chain configuration is, is huge. Uh, so um, really interesting to see that you're doing research in this space. Let me introduce here a quick question from, from our audience. Uh, Tomoki Ono is asking, in your experience, so are e-commerce and omnichannel trends also applicable to relatively expensive products such as you know high-end brands or cars? Are you seeing this also being a trend in those in those sectors? It's, sorry, Emma, can you repeat that? Yes. So for for very expensive, we know for groceries or for yes. you know like just um, products like that we use every day in our homes. This is a trend: the the omnichannel and, and e-commerce trend. But for high end products, very expensive products, is is there also a trend there for people wanting a more like omnichannel experience or looking for them like online? Or yes. is it different? Perfect. Great question. So yes, we are observing the increasing trend in all kinds of products. So for high tech products or high end products, yes, this is the trend also. Indeed, um, you know, uh, here on campus, I'm teaching omnichannel and e-commerce class. Um, we are discussing different uh, case studies, no, from different industries. Um, I would say that probably this a type of industry move later into omnichannel, but yes, now they are also uh, moving and implementing omnichannel strategies, and it makes it makes sense. Uh, the question is that for this type of products, people are typically willing to wait more, so they don't need the same day delivery for this type of products. So when they they are uh, willing to wait for a Tesla, for example months versus uh, another type of product that might be more a commodity and then they want to have the same day delivery. So there are implications from the supply chain perspective, but in terms of customer demanding omnichannel strategies, I would say or omnichannel experience, yes, the answer is yes. We are observing in both. Thank you, Eva. You also mentioned the adoption of new technologies as an imperative, but also a source of concern for many companies who are struggling to navigate the increasing complexity and also the crowded space of emerging technologies. So you specifically mentioned AI, and we all know this is one of the hottest topics this year, not only in the supply chain management field. So let's talk about AI and supply chains. But first, let me launch the second poll uh, to the audience. That is AI related, of course. And while they respond, um, let me ask you a question. So uh, Eva, from your experience, how is AI currently transforming supply chains? Yeah. So uh, as you mentioned, Ima, AI uh, uh, for sure offers unparalleled opportunities to transform supply chains. However, uh, many organizations are still uncertain about how to effectively implement AI within their existing systems. So. In my experience, most of them are still experimenting or piloting solutions based on AI tools. And also before um, deep dive a little bit more on AI examples that of course I have some examples from companies that are using these uh, tools, uh, we also need to clarify because uh, sometimes uh, different people are referring to AI meaning different things, correct? So it's important the scope or at least to clarify what do we mean when we mention AI. Um, for example, we should differentiate among these traditional AI machine learning tools like linear regression or k-means clustering or neural networks from the most recent generative AI tools these tools that use advanced natural language processing techniques, and also these tools that incorporate contextual understanding. That is kind of one of the, the, the key things that these new tools are, I think, bringing to, to, to many industries and many fields, and in particular to supply chain management. So answering your, your question more specifically, I would say, Imma, that one of the top areas that has been really impacted by AI is demand forecasting. This is totally aligned with the industry. In the uh, latest survey I conducted la last fall, I asked companies about, hey, what are the 
top number one areas that AI is impacting uh, in your supply chain. And demand forecasting was the top number one. AI tools can, uh, and I can get the point, uh, and I think these AI tools can incorporate predictive analytics um, and can also increase forecast accuracy. And forecast accuracy has been always a, a, a big topic for supply chainers, correct? So um, how are these tools doing that? They are doing that by incorporating data on multiple different vials, such as, for example, weather or special holidays or social media activity, including online reviews. So all of these new sources of, of, of information and data is there is definitely helping companies to have a more predictive analytics and better forecast. Uh, so these applications, I think, are uh, using huge volumes of historical data to uh, forecast their demand. So one big area, I would say demand forecasting. Another area that I have observed AI tools transforming supply chain is in personalizing the omnichannel experience. So companies can uh, recommend relevant products and offer customers a more personalized and unique shopping experience using these type of tools. And let me bring an example here. For example, companies like Zara, uh, this is a, a company, uh, part of the Inditex group, a Spanish uh, company. Uh, they are offering a, a click and try apps that give customers access to intelligent fitting rooms. Let me share one slide because I think it, it, it's going to be, uh, one second, I think it's going to be helpful to have a look to this type of solutions. So let me share the, the slide. So these high-tech intelligent dressing rooms um, allows uh, shoppers to scan a QR code for the items they would like to try on. So the associate bring those items into the fitting room and then shoppers can use a touch screen and browse from recommendations that are generated based on their shopping history. So this is a good example of how these technologies combining historical data from real-time data that is happening in the store at that moment and is offering or suggesting to the customer new items that might fit their preferences and their, their uh, requests. Okay, so, but uh, I want to bring this example because it's not only the AI tool for sure is trying to combine this historical data with the real time data that is happening and trying to suggest uh, items that fit um, uh, to the customer. But it's not only the use of AI, it's the combination of different technologies. In order to uh, have this type of solutions, um, these intelligent dressing rooms or fitting rooms also include augmented reality technologies, technology that combine uh, uh, digital data that they have with the real uh, uh, environment that is happening there. But more than that, in order to have this a uh, whole solution, they need to use uh, um, technology that helps them to track uh, their items. And in this particular case, Zara is using RFID uh, in order to um, have every single garment with this unique RFID tag. And this is something that allows them to have real-time inventory and knows exactly where the item is in the store, but more than that, where the item is in the entire supply chain. And this combination of RFID plus augmented reality plus AI tools in order to suggest new items is what is doing this technology kind of intelligent. And, and this intelligent part comes from the AI tool. So, in terms of the benefits, I would say that this type of tools definitely help stores to better understand customer preferences and customer demand by an analyzing items that customers try on, how frequently they are going to, to try these items, 
um, uh, the, this interaction with sales and demand. So this uh, analysis is much richer than before, I would say, thanks to these AI tools. So this is a uh, one example. Another area that I think uh, different kind of technologies and also in particular AI is transforming is the warehouse area. Is what we call the warehouse of the future. Or again, these intelligent warehouses. Um, I want to bring here another example, Ocado. Ocado is a only online model. It's a UK online supermarket. So Ocado, um, uh, invest a lot in uh, automation, but the, their solution is not only just to have robots that you can see, and there is a nice video that I encourage the audience if they want to watch the video, uh, it's called The Hive. They have the grid, they have the robots, but it's, the entire solution is much more than just the robots. Incorporate AI, AI tools, incorporate vision computing, incorporate a, a digital platform that is key when we are talking about this type of solutions. In, in, in their case, in particular, they develop all of these technologies. Ocado Smart Platform is the, is, the, is the digital platform they develop for that, but also they need to gain also this visibility that I was referring when I shared the Zara case study. They also invest a lot in analytics. And here is where the AI machine learning tools in combination with digital twins is helping them to have this holistic vision and this uh, integrated solutions that make these uh, warehouses, not only highly automated warehouses, but also intelligent warehouses. So, um, and in this particular case, they are uh, achieving all of this because they are investing a lot in in-house solution. But I will talk later about the implications for uh, employees and skills and this thing. Here, I just want to focus on these areas that definitely I'm observing AI transforming the way we have been doing the supply chain. And finally, I want to bring an example uh, from here, from the from CTL. So Dr. Matthias Wickenbach, the director of research, at CTL, uh, he ran different labs here. More recently, he founded the Intelligent Logistics System Lab. And in this lab, uh, they, are, uh, they are looking for this intersection in between different technologies like operation research, artificial intelligence, and machine learning technologies. And they are working a lot on the a last mile delivery is a, a classic problem that is the route optimization of these last mile deliveries. When we are talking about e-commerce, as I mentioned at the beginning, last mile is a big chunk of the complexity related to e-commerce deliveries. So uh, machine learning techniques and AI techniques are uh, definitely helping here because operation research has been used for many decades and they, they provide a decent solution, but they have limitations. So AI is trying to definitely help uh, to scale this human intuition, um, uh, incorporate uh, a lot of historical data with another source of data in order to come up with, let's say, better solutions. So these are just some examples that I'm observing AI uh, doing uh, great things. But as I mentioned, Imma, not only is just the AI tool, typically is the combination and integration of the AI tool with other type of technologies. Thank you, Eva. Thank you so much for illustrating with examples. I think it's much, it's easier to understand through an example than just theoretically. And uh, I think it's a very interesting insight how AI is not transforming supply chains by itself, it's a combination of technologies, an ecosystem of technologies that work together to really create these amazing innovations that, that change operations completely. Um, there are many questions in, in the chat. Some of them have already, I think, been answered partially or fully by, by your examples. But there are many questions about, uh, first, before, sorry, for going to the next topic, let me share the results of the poll because uh, I will launch it a few minutes, like 10 minutes ago and I had forgotten. So these are the results from the poll. Um, this is the opinion from the audience on the areas of the supply chain management areas that will be most transformed by AI in the next five years. And they agree with you 
84% uh, mm. of the uh, demand forecasting will be impacted and is already being impacted, right? Improved greatly thanks to AI, as well as inventory management that is closely related with, with forecasting for sure, but also we are using AI to decide where to allocate inventory more effectively to better serve customers. Warehousing, last mile delivery, actually like, you know, all the areas are gonna be impacted by AI. Um, some I think are more obvious than others, or maybe some of them are more readily impacted right now in the present and others will, it will take a little bit longer, but it will come. So yes. risk management and warehousing as well. And I think one that surprised me Eva is procurement. I know there's a lot of work being done with, with AI on how to um, selecting suppliers, monitoring suppliers, uh, actually like um, making more, more effective contract, more dynamic contracting. So I think that's an area that it's, there's already like a lot of work being done, maybe not so publicized or more not so obvious like others. Yes, definitely. Procurement is one of the areas that uh, AI uh, uh, companies are uh, uh, piloting uh, many different AI tools in order to improve that area. And it makes sense because um, they need to work with many different suppliers. Um, it makes sense to incorporate some of these tools and also um, to automatize some of these uh, processes is also helping a lot to gain efficiencies in procurement area. I also wanted to highlight from the poll, Ima, because definitely it was super aligned with what I just shared, but they also brought inventory management. And this is a, 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 something I want to also expand a little bit because definitely um, there are many, many different benefits for using AI. But I think one of the key benefits in particular in Omnichannel is AI is helping to better predict customer preferences. And I also make that point, but it's also helping to better capture relevant information that can enhance with the supply chain planning. And in particular, and there are examples, Walmart, uh, for example, they have one AI tool that connects customer preferences with their replenishment a system in order to make an automatic replenishment based on these customer preferences. So this connection is something that I'm happy that the audience highlighted also in the poll because uh, there are uh, examples and Walmart um, presented the, this in the last conference, CIS conference last January and what's specifically that? An AI tool for replenishment that has the potential to make inventory planners kind of uh, full-time strategies versus just uh, um, having them focus on uh, transactions that are more routine transactions, you know? So yeah, just wanted to bring that example here. Great. Yeah, I, I do agree with you. Inventory is gonna be a like huge impact in inventory management and planning. Um, so, Challenges. Uh, there are many questions, but there are quite a few about the challenges of implementing AI tools in, in companies, right? And in supply chain management. Uh, Ivan Pieter said, he said that, you know, they're hesitating uh, implementing AI tools due to the protection of intellectual property and sensitive data. So they are concerned about safeguarding um, data, data, critical data. Uh, Oswaldo Almonazzi, he also like is wondering, you know, what are the major challenges and barriers to widespread adoption of AI in supply chains? And many others are wondering the same. So it's great that um, actually that was some that's a topic we wanted to touch upon as well. In your opinion, Eva, what are some of the challenges companies face when integrating AI into their supply chains? Yes, um, great point, and we need to to cover that definitely because there are many challenges. If I need to start with one big challenge data, data, and data. Data-related issues represent the primary barrier here, I believe. And it's not, it's data availability, is data quality, and data sharing. And I would say in that order, you know, because we need to have the data, but it's not only that, some companies have the data, but the quality of the data is not uh, uh, still uh, uh, good to, to just uh, uh, conduct analysis based on that, and then data sharing. And this connects also with a second uh, challenge, that is the integration of information system. And this is particularly challenging for many, many companies. And the third one I need to bring here is 
education. And uh, education will be as a challenge and a solution. And um, let me elaborate first the challenge and then we can talk more about the solution. But definitely I have observed uh, talking with many companies in this area, this need to upskill the work the workforce. And um, we need to upskill the workforce in order to be able to get the best of these tools. And this means understanding the concepts, understanding the techniques that are behind the AI tools in order to be able to challenge the solutions, in order to be able to get the best of these powerful tools. Great. Thank you, Eva, for summarizing it so like succinctly, because I know it's you no, know, we could be talking about challenges for for hours, right? Uh, but those are like the key challenges. Of course, data privacy as well as um, yes, like our, our audience pointed out. Of course. That's a big yeah. one for many for many companies. So that's, Definitely. That's a concern, data so. privacy. And this also connect with another hot topic and big topic about ethics and how to use information and, 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 and all of this uh, area. Yeah, fully agree with data privacy. Yeah, big concern. Yes. So uh, you briefly touched upon like upskilling the workforce, the need for educating uh, professionals in the in the supply chain space on new technologies, AI in particular. Um, there's a lot of discussion around AI and job displacement. So what's your take on AI's impact on the supply chain workforce? I'm sure many people are concerned about that. Yes, yeah, this is a great a great question, Ima. So. AI will transform the supply chain workforce. I think there is no doubt about that. But it's also important to note that rather than replacing jobs entirely, AI, from as far as I can see that, will enhance human capabilities. So I think experts, um, skilled employees who understand again how to leverage these powerful tools will thrive uh, with, with this. Um, while automation and AI can help to automate, automate repetitive tasks and bring a lot of efficiencies like doing that, humans will still be essential for analyzing results, for challenging solutions, and for making strategic decisions. So um, in fact, uh, I think AI will allow professionals to focus on higher value tasks, improving efficiency uh, and, and also um, enhancing innovation through, through supply, the supply chain. But said that, uh, one challenge we also must address here is ensuring that the workforce is well-versed in the models, in the concepts, and the processes behind the AI tools. Professionals who understand both the technology and the supply chain can drive the most value. Um, so continuous learning and upskilling, I believe, will be critical in this new paradigm with this combination of AI, automation, and humans in the workspace. So to summarize, you don't believe AI will replace humans, but will enhance the work that humans can do, like allowing them to dedicate more time to make decisions, to analyze results, instead of you know having to merge Excel spreadsheets uh, for hours. Exactly. Um, I can I can definitely see how a specific task will be uh, automatized and will be uh, uh, we will be using AI tools for doing that, but not the entire job. So I still see the combination of humans, um, machines, um, and, and, and with the approach of taking the best of both worlds, you know? So I think still humans uh, has a lot of things, a lot of things that can contribute here and um, add value. And the, these type of uh, tools are, might help humans to focus more on this value added tasks that they can focus and um, automatize other tasks that are more repetitive or, um, or simple to automatize. Uh, yeah, and a second great, great point that you've made is that um, we cannot just rely on these tools as black boxes and just taking their output for granted. That is correct, but we need to understand the processes. We need to understand like the techniques behind in order to be able to assess whether it's or criticize the outcome and uh, in order to check 
uh, if it's right, wrong, if we need to revise something. So I think that that's a very interesting point as well, Eva. Mm -hmm. Great. So we were almost uh, at the end of the webinar. We have like five more minutes. Let me launch the third poll, uh, third and last poll of the session. And while everyone responds, I'm going to ask one last question uh, to Eva. So Eva, uh, most of our audience are supply chain professionals. They are working in supply chain space. So if there's one piece of advice you could give to them today, what would it be? Okay, so um, to truly benefit from AI tools, I think supply chain professionals must invest in education. I think it's important to, as, as we discussed, to understand not just AI, but core supply chain concepts and analytical tools. Um, to have a comprehensive end-to-end -end view of supply chain, combined with a strong analytical skills, I think will empower our supply chain professionals to fully leverage AI and stay competitive. So for me, upskilling, education, education, and this understanding end-to-end -end of the supply chain management issues. Thank you, Eva. I think that, that's great advice. Uh, upskilling is obviously key in this dynamic supply chain environment we are living right now. Digitalization introducing so many changes to supply chain design and operations that you know, we need to stay up to date and, and education is the best way. Um, this webinar, for example, is a great way to like know a little bit more about uh, latest trends, AI, supply chain. But also I would like to reinforce the message that I launched at the beginning of the webinar that uh, you know, the MITx Micromasters in Supply Chain Management can provide um, great core foundation and also an understanding of the end-to-end -end supply chain. So we uh, really would like to invite you to enroll in our courses. The entry courses of the program are now open for enrollment, Supply Chain Fundamentals and Supply Chain Analytics. So, you know, go to edX, enroll, and, and start learning with us. There's also a coupon code that is in there. And also, I think Akara has been sharing in the chat. So 30% is a pretty good deal. Uh, so make, uh, make use of it if you enroll. And um, before I drop up, let me end the poll, share the results, and see what you, all of you plan to do next. Many of you are going to continue working. So thank you for finding time to join us during your work day. Uh, we know how challenging that is with all the meetings and, and responsibility. Some of you are going to rest, going to sleep. So good night. Uh, we know you're a global audience. So thank you for joining from all around the world. Have some food. I think I'm going to do that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and a few of you are going to enroll in the program, continue learning in the program. Uh, just face yourself, find the time, uh, have a schedule. Uh, in order to, to make it to the end. And some of you are going to explore AI impact on supply chain through Gen AI chatbots. So that's another way, great way of learning. Of uh, we, we, we are using it as well and learning a lot while, while uh, discussing with these chatbots. So Eva, thank you so much for your insights uh, from your time. I learned a lot today. I hope our audience did as well. Thanks to Cara Greeny and Lisa Kim, who are part of our team, and they have been supporting this webinar and answering all your questions in the chat and in the Q&A. And thank you all of you for your participation and for being with us and sharing the poll, sharing your questions. We love to be, to be with you uh, live. Uh, the recording of this session, you have been asking about it. It will be shared via email with everyone who signed up, and then we will post it on our YouTube channel as well, so you will be hearing from us. And we look forward to seeing you in the MicroMasters in Supply Chain Management courses and in future webinars. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Emma and the team. Bye.